I am Milo, your main <clears throat> anchor. Uh, and I'm Grace, your prime anchor. And you're watching Wolf, Wolf TV. TV. Hey, Grace. Yeah? What's with the bear? Oh, well, um, historically, the reason for St. Patrick's Day is because St. Patrick got um, kidnapped by pirates, and then he went to Ireland, you know, drove all the snakes away, but yeah, yeah, but basically, pirates. It's historically accurate. Right. Hey, good evening, welcome back. The Painted Hills are located in Wheeler County, Oregon, and they are one of three units that make up the John Day fossil beds. The other two I will actually cover in upcoming episodes. It's a fascinating area and I'd love to talk more about it. The entire formation ranges from around 100 to 150 feet tall, and it's about three quarters of a mile long. The hills formed as volcanic activity deposited layers of iron oxide, ash, silicates, and other minerals over the last 40 million years, and as time went on, weathering brought out the colors and smoothed it into what it is today. There's an abundance of fossil remains of early horses, camels, and rhinoceroses in the surrounding area, and it's listed as one of the seven wonders of Oregon. Alright, that's it for this week. Ah, Tien, Bentley, Coop, you can't catch me. Everyone and welcome back to Pop Culture with Katie. Recently, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry sat down together with Oprah and conducted an interview, and it was certainly interesting. They opened up a lot about mental health struggles and apparent racism within the royal family. Um, Meghan Markle talked about how before her baby Archie was born, someone in the royal family who remained unnamed in this interview was actually concerned about what skin color the baby was going to have, which is just worrying. Um, and Meghan Markle also just opened up a lot uh, in general about her mental health and how bad it really got. During the interview, Oprah delivered an iconic line, were you silent or were you silenced? This, of course, became a meme, because what are we expecting at this point? Now, if you'd like to know what's happening with the situation as a whole, then I definitely recommend watching the interview in its entirety. It's definitely some interesting stuff. All right, now before I get stung by this wasp out here, that's all I've got for today. We'll see you guys next time. Hi guys, this is Mel with Max. A couple episodes ago, I did a segment on preparing to return to school, and I thought that it would be nice to do a follow-up on adjusting to the in-person environment, or readjusting, rather. So first off, uh, since everyone is required to wear a mask, since the mask covers up most of your face, it's a little harder to read facial expressions when you're talking to someone, so try being more vocal. Try talking more instead of just relying on facial expressions, which could be lost now that most of your face is being covered up. So just because some people are in person doesn't mean that everyone is. So that means that uh, the teachers are having to teach people in person and people on Zoom at the same time. So if you ever feel like you're not getting enough, I guess, attention, you can try to be more vocal or speak up and try to participate more so that you make sure you're learning as much as the kids who are on Zoom. And also try to remember that this is probably very difficult for the teachers as well, trying to teach two classes simultaneously. Also, it's very important to remember that readjusting to in-person school is going to take time, so let it take time, let it run its course and eventually you will get the hang of it again. This has been Mail with Max. Uh, now over to Isbo for a moment of zen. Hello friends. If you're anything like me, you're probably feeling quite unmotivated when it comes to school. But do not fear. I'm going to give you my top tips for getting back on track. Once you've spent hours finding the perfect study playlist, put your phone on airplane mode and set a study timer. I like to leave my phone somewhere where it won't distract me. And now, let's get studying. Well, 
when the alarm goes off and you're done studying, take a break. Watch some videos or TV, do yoga or another form of movement. Maybe you want to try a new hobby like painting. Or go outside for a breath of fresh air. Take a deep breath. We're in the home stretch. Take a break from the computer. Take a break from social media to clear your mind. When you do have to do schoolwork, let's do it as efficiently and thoroughly as possible. I believe in you. We've got this. I am Alexis Barnes, class of 2013, and videography has led to my career in visual storytelling. Videography has helped me in so many ways, especially with my career now as a real estate agent. Videography helped me understand how to work in a group environment, um, especially working on Wolf TV. Every week there's a new set of problems and you have to learn and adapt with one another's uh, styles. But there's plenty of programs out there that you can learn and, and get into, and it's really not that difficult once you start getting the hang of it. What did the Cedar Ridge Videography Department do for me? Well, I was actually able to make a film with the Videography Department team um, called Around the Same Table 2 that highlighted the intersection between traditional family farming and progressive sustainable farming um, that was featured at the United Nations National Climate Summit. And they actually flew me out to help um, present it. Having been exposed to this field early in high school has helped guide my education at UNC Chapel Hill, which has now led to my career as a creative content producer. I'm constantly creating films to advertise houses, and I actually work to advertise a lot of local businesses for free to just kind of get the word out and help people shop locally. And the skills that I learned in videography are essential to that process. I think videography kind of opened up a new artistic medium that I didn't really think was very accessible. There's so much that videography gives you in terms of uh, things that you learn from the course and things that you take away from the course. Because once you're done with it, you have a set of videos that you made from start to finish. It really helped me learn about communication and how in writing, when you try to squeeze as much meaning out of every little word and second that you have. Uh, so for that reason, I highly recommend the program to anybody who's interested in doing videography. Thanks, segments and videography. So, uh, it's almost St. Patrick's Day. Uh, do you have any St. Patrick's Day words of wisdom? Well, do you? Uh, it's green. Let's just sign out on three. <laughs> One, two, three. This has been... This has Now this is a little thing that makes Espanol confusing for a high school Spanish speaker. It's not at all amusing, of course I'm talking about porn par using.